So next we're going to go through graphing inverse sine and then inverse cosine and inverse tangent. So first we'll do inverse sine. Again, arc sine, inverse sine, said both ways, written both ways, doesn't matter. This is the parent function. Your domain is going to go from negative 1 to 1. All that I did was I took our traditional graph paper and I turned it on its side. So I don't have to renumber anything. This is going to be my radians for my y-axis and then my x-axis will then be in numbers because they're switching. So if you want to do that for your assignment, you're more than welcome to. Graph is going to go from negative 1 to 1 and then range is going to be from negative pi halves to pi halves. Some people find it helpful to rewrite this. So if I wrote the sine of y is equal to x, some people like to say, okay, the sine of negative pi halves is negative one. The sine of negative pi fourths is negative square root of two over two, which is about negative 0.7. The sine of zero is zero. The sine of pi fourths is a positive 0.7. And then the sine of pi halves is one. And so instead of, because you are familiar with this and this is what you've been practicing, some people find it easier to actually take their y values first and then plot their x values. And whether you can are able to do that in your head, whether you take the time to make a chart, doesn't matter to me. And so in this case, sometimes again, it's easier to pick those y values first because we don't know what the sine of pi 12 is. It's not a nice number, okay? And so for this case, with this graph paper, especially using negative pi halves, negative pi fourths, zero pi fourths and pi halves, it's gonna give us those x values. And so you can work your way backwards and then plot those points. There again are no arrows. It ends domain negative one to one, range negative pi halves to pi halves. So all the same rules, vertical stretch, vertical shrink, horizontal stretch, horizontal shrink, they're all important to remember. So if I have a number inside, that's going to cause a horizontal shrink. And if it's doing a horizontal shrink, that's going to affect my domain. So instead of going from negative one to one, I have a horizontal shrink of one half. My domain is only going to go from negative one-half to positive one-half. A horizontal shrink does not change my range. My range is still going to be the same. My range is still going to go from a negative pi-halves to pi-halves. And again, I can take this and I can rewrite it if I want and I can say that the sine of my y value is equal to two times my x value. So I can take this and I can go through and I can pick, because there's nothing in here, I can still do negative pi halves, negative pi fourths, zero pi fourths, and pi halves. And I can still work through my problem. So the sine of negative pi halves is negative one. Well, to solve for x, I divide by two and I get a negative one half. The sine of pi, negative pi fourths is negative square root of two over two, divide by two, and I get negative square root of two over four. Sine of zero is one. Excuse me, sine of zero is zero. So this is equal to zero. Sine of pi fourths is square root of two over two, divide by two, and I get square root of two over four. And then sine of pi halves is 1, divide by 2, and I get my 1 half.
So this graph is going to have a horizontal shrink. So instead of going from negative 1 to 1, it's going to go from negative 1 half to positive 1 half. And so square root of 2 over 4, that's one that I do not know off the top of my head. I'm guessing it's about 0.35. .35. And so it's not a linear, but it's kind of going to look like one. You can kind of make some, there's a little bit of a curvature here and a little bit of curvature here, but it's shrunk so tight, it just looks like a skinny little piece. And again, no arrows. That's it.